Hey, what's happening? Well, earlier today I went to a local high school and actually uh, got booked for their prom, which is coming up in May. And I've done events for this high school before. Really great group of students. I'm looking forward to working with them again. But it got me thinking about some things. I really haven't done a uh, school dance video as far as vlogs and talking about school dances. And uh, well, I did one a, a while back, but you know what? I thought it's time to do another one and kind of update some things on that. So. That's what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about school dances and uh, maybe you know you just do strictly weddings maybe you do other events but uh, you know what in my opinion I think it's always good to broaden your horizon okay you know if you just do weddings then you're gonna be limiting yourself just to weddings if you do just parties you're gonna be limiting yourself to parties so for me personally I try to offer my services to a broad range of events you know from school dances to weddings to parties and things like that of course I have to say that most uh, of my business I'd say probably 95% of it is weddings, and that's the way most mobile DJs are. So let's talk about school dances for a second. First of all, school dances, uh, when you do them, they're not going to pay as much as weddings do. That's just you know that's just a fact of life, and in most markets that's usually the way it is because uh, well the schools are on a budget. You know if you remember being in school you probably remember having to do fundraisers. You know maybe you sold candy for band or did car washes. I mean I know I, I spent many a Saturday mornings uh, doing car washes when I was in band and drama and things like that. So the students have to raise the money most of the time, and uh, you know you got to keep that in mind. You got to keep in mind that they're in a on a budget. And uh, the thing that uh, that that's that you really need to keep in mind when you think about that is uh, is you know try try to look at it from the student's point of view, okay, and how much money they have to raise, and how much work they have to put into it, and that's something you need to consider too. But uh, for school dances, though, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that uh, you know I know a lot of DJs will look at school dances and and think, okay, well, you know, I don't have to do a whole lot of work with this, you know, I'm not, you know, this is gonna be a breeze. Well, no, it's not gonna be a breeze because this is the way I feel about it, about the way I feel about school dances. You know, those students, they're looking up to you to give them a good event. And, uh, you know, they want to, to have an event that they're going to remember for the rest of their lives. Or, you know, think back to your prom. You probably remember your prom and who you went with and, you know, where it was and all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, there's probably some happy memories for you. Well, just like we want to make happy memories for brides and grooms, we also want to make happy memories for those students because this is a really important time in their life. You know, they're only going to be teenagers once, and, uh, you know, the prom is, is a big deal. I mean, when you're 16, 17 years old, what's more important to you than your prom? Think about that. And it really is a big deal to them. And, you know, when I met with those students today, I, I, we started talking about that. I told them about when I got into mobile DJ, you know, why I do school dances and what my philosophy is on that. And I'll tell you what it is, okay? I think back to when I was in school. You know, and I look back and I think, okay, well, what was it that I didn't like when I was in high school? Well, when I went to my prom, you know, or maybe we had homecoming dance, or we used to have after football dances, uh, after, you know, after the football games in the fall, you know, at least after the home games anyway, everybody would go back to the school and uh, we'd have a dance from, say, 1030 at night till midnight. And it wasn't anything fancy. He was just in the gym. You know, they'd usually have a DJ, but he never would have any lights. And he would be off in a corner somewhere, and he wouldn't really play any music that... Uh, that we ever recognized, and he never talked on a mic or introduced himself or anything else. He's kind of like an anonymous guy that was off in the in the background there. And that's the, you know, and when I started thinking about that, that's not the type of person I wanted to be. But at the time, that's what we had at our, at our school. And uh, I remember telling a friend of mine one time, I think we were at a homecoming dance or something. I can't remember where it was, but I was talking about how I wanted to be a DJ, and I said, you know what? When I become a DJ, I'm going to make sure that if I do a school dance, I'm going to make sure that those students get what they want. And they're going to have the freedom to be able to tell me what they want because I want to make sure that I play the music that they want. Because, I mean, our DJs, they would play just these mixes of stuff that we never really recognized. I mean, you know, we still had fun going and visiting with our friends and seeing everybody. But, you know, a, whole, whole, a lot of times most people weren't really dancing, you know, and that's you know, because we didn't really recognize the music. And that's, you know, that, that's kind of what I think about. Now, think about this, okay? When you do a school dance, put yourself in the student's position, okay? What do they want? What would you want if you were in their position? And that's and that's kind of what what got me in the mood to start thinking about school dances and how uh, how they work and you know get in the frame of mind of the students. Now, what I normally do when I do meet with the students is I go and have a consultation with them, just like I did today. And uh, usually, we meet in the classroom of the uh, teacher who's who's in charge, and I meet with the students. They're going to be making the decision, and uh, you know I answer their questions. And uh, one of the big questions these students asked me today is they said that they've had DJs in the past that uh, you know wouldn't play the music that they wanted. I mean, they'd make him a list, but he'd never play anything off the list. And this is what I told them. I said, okay, you know what, guys? You know, it's not about what I want. It's not about you know anything else. It's about what you guys want. And I want you guys to make me a list of songs, and uh, you know that that you guys want me to play. And that's what we're going to do. 
and we'll take that list and mix it up with the request from your guest. But the only uh, drawback to that is, you know, that the songs have to be clean and your administration has to approve them. And I told them, I said, well, here's the thing. If you guys make me a list of songs and, uh, you know, you if it's questionable, you know, then you go in and, and take it to your, um, uh, your, your uh, teacher sponsor, the, the teacher that's in charge, and ask her to listen to it. And if she says it's okay, I'll play it. And that's usually the way I do that. I mean, I, you know, the kids love having that kind of freedom because they you know they feel like they're more involved and they feel like that you know they've got to say so on what's going to happen to their prom and i mean it gives them a, a lot of self-satisfaction i mean think about that you know when you were in school did you really have a whole lot of choice in what music they got you know if you're on a prom committee or something like that and that's the way i think about it you know what i'm saying and uh, you know i kind of approach it that way and i tell those students that i want them to have an event that's important to them you know i want them to have a memorable prom just like i want a bride and groom to have a memorable wedding you know, because like I said, you know, they're only going to be 16 or 17 once, and they're only going to have, well, two proms at the most, you know, junior and senior. And, uh, you know, we want to try and make it special for them, just like we want to try and make, um, you know, uh, brides happy on their wedding day as well, and uh, things of that nature. So that's what you got to think about, you know, and just really just put yourself in the student's position. Now, one thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to play music that's going to tick off the administration or the teachers. Okay, now I know that those students, they're going to try you. Okay, believe me, I've had them try me before. And uh, I had uh, one time I was doing a school dance and I actually had the students write down their requests. And I usually keep a clipboard, you know, kind of off to the side. I usually don't like the students coming up to me, you know, trying to talk to me during the dance because I'm usually, you know, my mind's going in all different directions trying to cue up music. So what I usually do is I ask them to write their songs uh, down or their requests down on a clipboard. I keep it, you know, just off to the side. And then, uh, you know, that way I've got it written down. Well, I had the students one time request uh, F the Police, and there is a song called that, okay? I've actually checked into it, and it was a, a song that was uh, popular back a long time ago. Well, do you really think I could play that at a school dance? I don't know why they requested that, but, you know, they're going to try and test you, and they're going to try to get you to play stuff that's uh, controversial. So, uh, another example of that is a, couple, a few years ago, about five years ago, I was doing a, um, a middle school Catholic dance, or Catholic middle school dance, I should say. And here's the funny thing about that. I had the students come up to me requesting songs, and uh, you know the only thing that, that that the administration had told me when they hired me is they said we're going to let you use your judgment and uh, just uh, you know make sure that the music's clean. You know, but you got to keep in mind though that is a Catholic school; it's not a public school, so you know we have to be a little bit more uh, cautious when you're doing uh, schools like that. I had the students come up to me requesting this one song, and uh, you know. I don't know. I told them, I said, well, I don't really know if that's going to be appropriate, but I'll tell you what, if you go ask your principal and they say it's okay, I'll play it. Okay, and we'll just leave it at that. If they, if they give me the approval, we'll go ahead and play it. Well, they went and asked the principal, and she came uh, up to me, and, I, and she was probably a little nun, about maybe this big, I guess. Maybe she's about five foot tall, you know, a little, lady, a little older lady, and she came up to me. She, you know, she had the, uh, the uh, you know, the nun veil and everything else. And she came up to me and uh, just real sweet lady and said, uh, okay, several of the students have requested a song and they told me that it's got a good Christian message. I said, oh, really, what song was that? She said, it's a Yeah by Usher. And they promised me that, that that's got a good Christian message. I said, ma'am, I said, that song is not a Christian song, okay? I would be, you know, it's borderline to be played at public schools, but I certainly wouldn't play it at a Catholic school. So those kids tried to pull one over on her. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that I was on my feet on that one, though. But, uh, yeah, Yeah by Usher, it, it's, it may be okay for some public schools. Some public schools may not play it, but I can almost guarantee it's not appropriate for a Catholic middle school. So anyway, that's just the, the ballpark on that and, uh, you know, thinking about what, uh, what you're doing for school dances. And, uh, you know, really, when, if you're going to do a school dance, meet with the students and ask them, you know, what do they want to hear? You know, find out what they want to hear. Maybe give them your email address and, you know, just, just have a dialogue with them because that's really what they want. You know, and it's, it's always good to be able to interact with the students as well. And, of course, we talked about the dance contest. You know, you've seen my videos doing the fast dance contest, slow dance contest, and, uh, you know, all different, all different things there. So that's, that's something just to keep in mind when you uh, think about doing school dances. But just really put yourself in the, ch in the, the students' um, shoes. Now, I usually don't say kids around them. I usually say students. That's usually the best thing. Don't call them kids. You know, because, you know, when you were like 15, 16, you didn't want to be called a kid. So, anyway, that's just some tips on uh, school dances. If you got any questions at all, just feel free to drop me a message, drop a comment, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. But, um, yeah, school dances can be rewarding, but, again, uh, they, uh, they're they going to take work as well, just like a wedding would, but not nearly as much as a wedding would, would, would uh, take. But uh, you're definitely going to have to work when you do uh, school dances and, uh, you know, you, you got to keep in mind you got to give those kids the, the performance and, and make sure that they have a memorable, a memorable event just like you would for a bride and groom. 
So until next time, practice and enjoy.